There are those who like to point out the compassion of Jesus Christ, and rightly so, the shepherd carrying a lamb. There are those who base their ministry upon his miracles and talk much about the one who raised the dead and healed the sick and cleansed the leper and cast out demons, and rightly so. There are those who say much about the kingdom that Christ came to build and how he offered himself as a sacrifice for us and went to the cross and died that we could be saved, and rightly so. But in this day and time, it's not popular at all. 19, 2008, as a matter of fact, it's not popular at all to take everything that Jesus Christ said and preach on it. For the Son of Man is the one who said, Hell fire. If you could take hell from the Bible, which most churches have today, then you could accommodate people in a different way. You could make them comfortable, for there would never be a fear of a future judgment. But according to the New Testament, there is no doubt that Jesus Christ, of all people that ever lived on the face of this earth, preached more on hell than anyone else. And he told us about hell, described it, laid it out in simple terms, where it's unmistakable as to what kind of place it is. Here in Matthew chapter number 5, he said that it is hell fire. Therefore, the word fire is included in this place called hell. He spoke of it in the simple sense that you accept it for what I say. It is hell fire. In plainer words, it does exist. Throughout Old Testament scriptures, it even says that hell hath enlarged itself. Apparently, it is never full. Right. But when the Lord Jesus Christ showed up 2,000 years ago, the lowly Galilee and the carpenter and all of that, my friend, he preached about hell. And in Matthew 5 at the Sermon on the Mount, which is supposed to be the great liberal sermon, he brought in the doctrine of hell. And he said, it is hell fire. So according to the scriptures, hell is a place that literally exists. That's not a Baptist doctrine. That's not a Methodist doctrine. That's a doctrine of the Bible. It exists. Yes, friend. There's nothing you can do to change that this morning. Hell does exist. It is a place. It is somewhere. And it awaits those that, my friend, leave this world unprepared to meet God. Hell exists. It is a place that was created for the devil and his angels. It was made, therefore, as a place of punishment, not a place to simply go to. It is designed for punishment. So the Bible says it is a place that is called hellfire. If you're very smart today, have half intelligence, you ought to be doing some thinking about where you're going when you leave this world. There's one thing that is absolutely certain, and you ought to know this. You should know it and come to face with it. Come to the facts and settle this. You are going to die. You will leave planet Earth. I know you think that you're going to live forever. You like to put this out of your mind and not think of the fact that one day you'll draw your last breath. Your heart will be its last time. There will be no more life left in your body. Where is your soul going? Right, right. Are you prepared? I know you prepared your house. I know you prepared your income. I know you prepared your marriage, your children. You planned out your whole life. But you've made no plans whatsoever for where you're headed when you leave this world. Hell is a place. It is a place that existed before you were ever born. It is there. It's going to be there. And there's nothing you can do to change that one bit whatsoever. It doesn't make any difference if the churches today have stopped preaching on hell, if the preachers don't preach on hell, if the seminaries and Bible colleges don't teach the young men about hell, if they extricate it from the Bible, it makes no difference whatsoever. It is still a place that you must deal with one day. Somebody, my friend, died this morning and they went to hell. Somebody took their last breath this day, July the 20th. 2008, they drew their last breath and awakened in hell. What a shock it must have been. There are those that deny that it exists, but that doesn't change it. One day you'll lift up your eyes in hell. It's descriptive talk in Luke chapter 16 when the rich man died and was buried and the Bible says in hell he lifted up his eyes. It's, a, it's almost as if it says he awakened in a place that was absolutely beyond his wildest imagination. He never for one time thought that such a place like that could exist. He lifted up his eyes in hell. He became aware of his presence. He knew where he was 
And from that moment on, there's not a thing he could do to change his circumstance and his situation. There is no salvation in hell. There's no Savior in hell. There's no Bible in hell. There's no blood in hell. There's no altars in hell. There's no forgiveness in hell. Whatever goes to hell stays in hell. It's permanent. It's settled. It's settled. It's over with. What you've done in this life is what determines where you go. When you die without God, you go to hell. Hell is a place, therefore, that awaits you at the end of your life. It's waiting. It's a place that, my friend, has plenty of patience. It doesn't matter if you live 150 years. It won't bother hell one bit. It's waiting. It has much patience, for it knows that every soul lost without God that departs from this world will enter into its mouth. It will take its clutches, as, as, as Joel said, and wrap themselves around it and pull it down into the midst of hell itself. It gives it an identity, a personality, almost like hell takes glee in the fact that those that die without God are entering into its presence. That's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. That's why he died at the cross at Calvary. He didn't die to make you rich. He didn't die because of who you are. He didn't die to create this hell hole you know about. He died to keep you out of hell. That's why he went to the cross. That's why it's so horrible. That's why it took the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible said God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That's why Calvary was so horrendous. Because he would keep you out of hell. There's only one name on the face of this earth that can keep you out of hell. It's not Baptist. It's not Methodist. It's not Presbyterian. It's not Catholic. It's not Jew. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell and it's the name of Jesus what does the Bible say we're judged by the book my friend what does the Bible say well preacher I want to tell you the truth I've never read it that's the truth most Christians haven't read it they've never read it through from Genesis to Revelation the sad state is that in the church today most people are as ignorant of the Bible as they can be that's why they can be tossed from one church to the next church one doctrine to the next doctrine it's because we are such a flim flam butch because we don't know anything about God or his word it's a sad commentary but the Bible has not changed hell is real I'm not going there Amen. Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter number 5 Amen. hell fire oh if I thought for a moment I was going to hell I don't think I could sleep to sleep tonight if I thought for a moment that I may not may die I'm about my, my body may cease today my heart may beat its last this may be my last day on planet earth and maybe your last day on planet earth you may be totally completely physically healthy right now but something takes your life away you could die before the sun goes down your body be lying dead in the morgue down here said somewhere and they'll be having your funeral a couple of days from now where will you be where will you be where will you be some of the biggest and greatest that's ever lived among men are in hell right now. Hell knows no identity. It is no respecter of persons. The young and the old go to hell. The rich and the poor go to hell. The black and the white and the red and the yellow go to hell. Hell knows no distinctions. Baptists go to hell. Methodists go to hell. Presbyterians go to hell. Catholics go to hell. Episcopalians go to hell. Russians go to hell, Jews go to hell, Americans go to hell, Englishmen go to hell, Portuguese go to hell, Africans go to hell. Yep. Amen. Without Jesus Christ, there is no way out of hell. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. Some of you in here are going to hell. You're going to hell. And here's the saddest thing about hell. When you get there, it's too late. Nothing can be done for you. You're going to hell. And when you die, it's too late. The rich man said, let me go back. Let me go back and warn my brethren. Oh, Abraham, let me go. This place of torment. I've 
got to warn them. Right. He said, they've got Moses and the prophets. Right. Yeah. They hear not Moses and the prophets. They hear not one that comes back from the dead. That's right. That's right. He said, oh, Abraham, would you just please take Lazarus and just send him here with a drop on his finger to drop it in my tongue. Yeah. Lest I be twang. Oh, just a little drop. Oh, Lazarus, just a drop. I tormented in these flames. Hell is at the end of a Christ-rejecting life. Yeah. Amen. Where's hell? It's waiting. Yeah. Are you ready? How do I stay out of hell, preacher? See, that's the good thing. I don't want to go to hell, preacher. That's good. Thought of it, uh, that worries me, preacher. I don't want to go to hell. That's good. That's good. That's real good. How can I not go to hell, preacher? One name. One name given among men whereby we must be saved. Only one name. Only one name. That's the name of Jesus. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. What does it mean to have him, preacher? It means you've embraced him. You believe on him. He's in you. He's your Savior. Are you ready? Let me tell you where hell is. It'll be at the end of your life. If you don't know the Lord. It'll be waiting.